Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are talking about a pen from Faber-Castell and that pen is the Ondoro. Now Faber-Castell is one of my favourite brands of pen. Um, I really, really, really like uh, the steel nibs. Um, these are sort of the on the budget side of the Faber-Castell line. There's also the Graf von Faber-Castell line which is sort of their more exclusive line. This is a unique pen. It's, the body is made of a uh, oak uh, and it's smoked oak depending on the where the model is listed. Um, the cap is chrome, uh, covered metal, it's got a spring-loaded clip, little shiny finial, nice hexagonal shaped body which, you know, is unique and different and cool. I really like the design of this pen. It's not going to be to everybody's taste, but I really do quite like it. I think it's a fabulous looking pen. And I like the size. It's not big in the hand, but it's certainly not small. It's got sort of a nice sort of size uh, to it. And as I said, it comes with those wonderful Faber-Castell steel nibs. Now I have this in a medium, which is my uh, preference, of course. Uh, and I've got the Emotion, I've got a range of looms, all with these sorts of nibs, and they all write absolutely beautifully. So, let's quickly cover uh, the specs of this pen uh, before I get into the writing sample, and then a couple of little uh, issues that I think need to be brought up. Okay, so uncapped or capped sorry this pen is 127 millimeters uncapped it's 125 and posted it's 160 so it's never a huge pen the cap does back weight the pen ever so slightly the pen weighs 44 grams 26 is in the body and 17 is in the cap um and so and that's uh, partially inked i've been using this pen for a couple of weeks uh, so it's not a small pen, and as I said, the section's 9 to 10 millimeters, so it fits nicely in the hand. It is a short section, but with this design, you don't feel the step up there um, to the, you don't feel the step up there to the um, to the body of the pen. It's so you can sort of hold it a bit for the back if you wanted to, but it is quite comfortable with that very tapered uh, design. So, um, this is the Ondoro. So. What I'll do is I'll do a quick writing sample and then I'm going to talk about a couple of things with this pen that I love uh, and a couple of things that I just find to be really frustrating. So, uh, here is some Rhodia paper, uh, plain 80 gram Rhodia paper. This is a medium nib, I have it inked with Waterman Serenity Blue. And as the ink is Waterman Serenity Blue. So there's a tiny bit of feedback on this nib. It is smooth, and I think it's pretty wet. Um, you know, you're not going to get you're not getting a gushing pen here, uh, but you're certainly getting a pen that lays down a nice line uh, on the paper, and there's not too much feedback, and it is smooth. Um, it's not, as I said, it's not a big pen, but it fits nicely sort of in the hand. Uh, this sort of size of the barrel actually compensates for the fact that so you're not holding a narrow pen as well as sort of a shorter uh, pen. Um, the nib, as I said, steel, very normal for these Faber-Castell nibs. Just do a little bit of reverse. It's possible, it's a bit scratchy, a bit more feedbacky, more than scratchy. Um, but yeah, it's, look, it's, a perfectly nice nib and if this was the only nib in my collection I would be more than happy it does a beautiful job the line isn't super wide for a medium I have a Faber-Castell uh, loom where the medium nib is probably close to double the width of this um, but this is nice this is a nice sort of comfortable medium uh, and the pen is nice to write with and I can write with this pen over long periods of time which is one of the other things I really like about it I should just say here it is a cartridge converter pen um, uh, mine's almost completely out of ink there, as you can see. Uh, it's a standard international cartridges and converter. I have a Faber-Castell converter in here. Um, the packaging it comes with is the standard Faber-Castell packaging, that white, or used to be, of that, when I got this pen at least, of that white slip with the draw um, and all that. If you look at other reviews of Faber-Castell pens, you will see exactly what I mean. Um, so, yeah, it's a lovely pen to write with. It's Expressive, it's not expressive, it's it's a straight medium nib, it's quite stiff, um, like you're not going to get any line variation really out of this, it's like a slight, 
you know, a little bit of a slightly wider line, but not, you could certainly not call this soft in any uh, stretch. So, it's a nice pen to write with. I really, really like this pen with a few small issues. Now, first is gonna be an issue that isn't a problem for me. All this chrome, people just hate it. It picks up fingerprints, um, particularly the section. Um, people really don't like that, and I understand that. It's not my favorite either, but it's not a problem for me. I don't see it as an issue necessarily. But there are three things I think are an issue. One of which I can get around, one of which I wish wasn't the case, and one just is bad, okay? So the one I can get around is this clip. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be visible, but you can see there's some corrosion around uh, the, where the clip goes into the cap. So there's been some moisture from ink or whatever, um, and it's getting out and it's getting to the untreated steel and it's rusting. So that's really unfortunate. And in a way that leads, like it's it's not a huge issue, it's aesthetically it's not a problem, but it does lead to my next issue. There is an air issue with this cap. I'm thinking it's either around the clip or it's in the cap uh, capping system itself, but the pen does run dry. Um, just while I'm here to show you the, how beautiful, actually the pen actually is, I do like the design as I said. Um, but there is an issue, it does dry out. Um, if I don't use this pen for a couple of days and I go to write, I have to actually prime the feed or dip it in water or something like that just to get the ink flowing again. There is an air seal issue with this cap. Now, the biggest problem I have with this cap is the fact that I've had this pen for a year. I've used it on and off, not a huge amount. More over the last few weeks in preparing this review than I have at any other point. And it's broken. So I'm not sure if you can see here that black ring there around the base of the nib. I think that's where the cap seals or clicks because like this is a click cap, but that's like, I don't know. It's hard to explain how little pressure it actually takes to remove it, but like I could, pro I'm not going to try this, but I could probably shake the pen free, um, which isn't great. Um, if you can't provide a solid capping, then the pen shouldn't be. Um, and this pen normally caps really, really well, but that keeps happening. Now I, I occasionally, oh, there it goes. So it's, now it's gone. So it has literally just broken off. Um, that shouldn't happen. So it probably won't even, so now it's just falling off. So there you go. Live example of what can go wrong with the Faber-Castell on Doro. Um, it's a real shame because I really like the pen and I wish the pen was, the capping of the pen was better. Uh, but as you can see, there is a pretty big issue there when part of the capping mechanism falls off in the video. Um, so anyway, that's the pen. And uh, just a couple of details so you're aware, this pen retails for between $150 and $200. Uh, in Australia, so that's not a cheap pen uh, and You know Quality should be better than that and I'm surprised from Faber-Castell because I do love the loom and the emotion is just a beautiful pen I want to love this pen as I said. I like writing with it. I've always enjoyed writing with it I'll continue to use this even with the dodgy capping. I just won't take it out of the house um, I like writing with it. That's the main thing and so look if it's gonna be a Issue for you it's something to be aware of so I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, and if you've got products you think I should be looking at, get in touch. Or if you've got a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.